I just bought a 34 inch widescreen monitor for my 2012 Mac mini. Am I crazy? <laughs> Let's find out. All right, so if you follow me for a long time on my channel, you know that I like to kind of go out and find some old Apple equipment, whether it's computers or whatever you can find, try to repurpose them, see how long they can last, see what kind of power we can get out of them. And that's what I did here. So I went out and I bought a 34 inch LG widescreen monitor. And uh, again, this is 2021 right now. And the computer I bought for that monitor, or I had actually, was a 2012 I, or a Mac Mini, 2012 Mac Mini. I got the i5 version, eight gigs of RAM, running an SSD. I showed people before that it's still a very capable system. The 2012s, if you can pick them up, you know, the i5s are somewhere in the 200s usually, two to 300s. The i7s are a lot better, um, you know, a lot faster and stuff. They're usually a little bit more expensive. The reason for it is the Mac Mini is actually, in, that, in 2012, they actually shipped with quad cores, very capable CPUs. And then after 2012 and 2013, they actually went down to a much slower two core processor. And now they finally got back up to the M1. Now they're really, really fast. But if you can pick up one maybe for in the 200s or so, maybe 250, somewhere in there, the i5 version, is it worth your money? And how does it perform on the widescreen? Is the widescreen gonna be a good experience for video editing and things like that? Um, I showed you before, it actually can handle a lot. And uh, that's a nine-year-old computer. So let's get into it right now. I'm gonna show you guys my setup, what it looks like. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just show you some performance things again on my widescreen to show you what my experience is like. And we'll go from there. Just gotta make some content. Hopefully people like this. Put some comments below. All right, so my main setup is right here, and that's a 2017 iMac 27 inch. But really, I wanted to see what I could do with my 2012 Mac Mini. So let's take a look. Right behind me, I actually set this up right over here, and there's my beautiful 34 inch monitor. You can see it's an LG monitor. This is the one I wanted to uh, set up with the Mac Mini just because I wanted the extra real estate when I do video editing or when I'm browsing the web. But here is the computer itself. It's a 2012 i5. It's got eight gigs of RAM, and it also has, I believe it's got an, well, it does have an SSD, but it's not the best. I had a video on that a while back, so it's not the best quality. But overall, it's a good system. It works really snappy right now for all the tasks that you need to use right now. Uh, you know, just in 2021, it works great, believe it or not, at nine years old. So the setup is really clean. You can see it here. Overall, I really, really like the setup, and I'm gonna enjoy using this for sure. Uh, down here below, I do have an Alienware computer, so I have a couple PCs you can see down on the floor, and that's my main PC that I need. Sometimes I use that for just, you know, not video editing, but other things. So you can see that I have a more traditional PC mouse here, and uh, and then I also have, uh, you know, a microphone there as well that I use to, to voice over videos and things like that. And on top of it, then I also have a keyboard here that's made more for a PC than it is for a Mac as well. And uh, sometimes that causes a problem, but overall it has been pretty good. The monitor, though, is an LG. This is is actually a 34 inch it's 34 um 696 i'll have a link in the description it's a great monitor it's free sync 21.9 uh, as far as the resolution so overall it's been a great experience it's made you know just viewing the mac uh, so much better than you know a small screen here it is i mean the colors are really good on this monitor and it plugs right in um, the cable that I had to use actually though was a little bit different. This is going to be a mini display port to display port. I have display port on that monitor. So I had to find a cable that was display mini display port to display port. Here's a close up of it. And this is only like, I think this is like under $15. So it's a really good deal here. So I picked this up and it worked really, really well for me. Here it is in the back of the, the actual system. You can see it plugged in. So it plugs right into your kind of Thunderbolt one port mini display port. Um, overall, the experience is really clean, uh, really, really sharp on everything. The only issue I had is if you try to use HDMI on this, it'll actually um, basically stretch the screen. So you do need that cable if you have a, a display port on the back of your monitor. So just keep that in mind. I'll have a link in the description to that cable. Video editing is a huge pleasure on this as well. You can see it here. You get tons of room on your timeline and in your sound and everything. It's just a great system overall. And then if you're browsing as well, you can put up three different screens here. You can see them all. You, have, you can get a huge work area done as well. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna kinda do a screenshot and just show you some of the performance on this. How well is this 2012 work in 2021? Very good. It's going to be kind of hard to show you how everything works here, but basically on a, on a 34 inch screen, you can see it here, everything is laid out. It's really stretched really nicely, so you can get a lot of work in here. For instance, I showed you earlier, but you can bring up three different windows. They load very fast in this 2012. You can see them here. So you can scroll through three different types of windows and you know get all your work done if you need to do, you know, go ahead and do that. So that's not a problem at all. 
let's go ahead and just shut these down or at least minimize them. So I have a lot of things running on this 2012 and it actually works really well. I mean, name a Windows computer that's going to be, you know, nine years old and it's going to perform this well. Things like, you know, I use iMovie a lot. Now here, I'm going to open that up. It bounces a few times. What is that? Just three or four times and it opens up. Look at that. So it's very quick to open up. Um, it takes maybe a second or two longer than, than some of the newer systems, but it's very, very responsive. You can see how everything is stretched out. You have a lot of real estate to, to put all of your titles and all of your um, transitions up here. As far as the smoothness of the video, look in the upper right-hand corner. I mean, everything is very smooth. It doesn't actually skip any frames. This is going to be 1080p only video editing. It's out of a Panasonic G5, but still, I mean, the quality of this with transitions and everything else involved, almost no stuttering whatsoever a great experience so the reason i wanted is to kind of you know go back to using a 34 inch with this is because it makes the experience just so much better you can see you know the performance is there for a, for a 250 dollars mac and also you know only you know again this is going to this is going to have trouble with 4k it's going to definitely take way longer but on 1080p you can see that I, I can go as fast as i want and there's almost no stuttering whatsoever so iMovie is really good other programs like keynote here if you click on it you can see how fast it loads that only jumped once and it's up so look how quick that is i mean let's just let's just go ahead and shut that down one last time and let's just do it one last one more time I mean, is your is your new computer this fast look at this one and then up so i don't know how fast that is but that's only one bounce that's pretty amazing and i have other things open at the same time this 2000 uh you know this 2012 only has uh, eight gigs of ram too and uh you know but it does have that quad core cpu so overall uh, and let me just show you you know everyone's going to say well you may have a super fast ssd in here again i show people a while back i don't this i bought this used this mac mini and you know it's really got a kind of a slow ssd in it, it it's, it's, it says it's 126, 130 something. What is it gonna, it's, it's, it goes all over the place, but it's gonna be about 130 megabytes on the right and 495 on the reads, but the, the writes are, you know, really low actually. So it's, it's a pretty capable system for the cost. In any case, just wanted to show people the experience. I mean, overall you can get just, you know, all your workflows done uh, very quickly. If you open up any type of program with this 34 inch screen, it just makes everything way nicer to work on. Everything's cleaner. You have space for everything, so I highly recommend 34 inch. Buy a $250, you know, 2012 Mac Mini, and try to put as much RAM and an SSD in there, and you're good to go for 1080p video editing or anything like, video, you know, just editing, uh, you know, movies or pictures or anything like that. So that's just my two cents on it. Okay, so besides the OS being an issue, and you can get kind of work around that if you know what you're doing. Realistically, it's actually a very capable system for the cost. I mean, it actually seems like it's more capable than a lot of these new Windows machines. And trust me, I use Windows machines all the time and I like them. But I mean, just saying, as far as snappiness and just, you know, browsing and everything else, and I don't even have the best SSD in my Mac Mini. It said someone else put that in when I purchased it and it was it's a really slow SSD. I can probably speed that up quite a bit. So at the end of the day, for 250 bucks, if you want the Mac OS and you have a widescreen monitor, maybe for video editing, the experience is actually really good. So again, I'm not telling you to go out and buy one, especially with a 699, you know, M1 uh, Mac Mini right now. But if you're, you know, if that $400 is a huge difference to you, you already have maybe a widescreen. I mean, I wouldn't buy it all at once or anything like that. But if you already have something and you want to start getting into 1080p video editing, even really low 4K, I've, I've shown you we can do that. It just takes a really long time to render. But at the end of the day, it does work pretty good. So let me know what you guys think. Just wanted to show you my setup and hopefully you like these kind of retro type videos going back in old equipment. I know some people like them, some people don't, but just put some stuff in the comments and what you want to see. Make a couple of videos a week. I will talk to you soon. Peace.